Hello and welcome to whatever Be this is. Bienvenue. So you were saying there that you don't like milk bottles on Facebook or I YouTube. Don't milk bottles on YouTube. You see, recently my YouTube has hit a wild and exciting pitch. I had like one and a half or 1.6 million views in a week. And um, it's basically because I am reading Great Expectations by Charles Dickens aloud while dressed saucily and has attracted a huge male audience somehow by some glitch of the universe. I'm out there in my smalls reading a bit of Dickens and it has inspired many hilarious comments on my YouTube channel. Um, but some of them contain like the emojis of baby's milk bottles. Right. Which I find a little disturbing, but I think it is relating to like like lactation and my udders. I guess I I, I guess I'm being regarded as a sacred cow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to know what people are thinking about on the internet, but... Um, it is. But, I mean, I have worked in a sex shop, of course, where I would occasionally get people who would walk in, look me dead in the eye, and say, do you have any magazines of lactating women? So I'm guessing that's what it is, right? You say, you should say, no, I don't, but you're <laughs> going to Tesco and buy yourself two pints of milk. <laughs> Once someone came in and said, can I buy your knickers for 50 quid? <laughs> oh, God. What a statement that is. Well, it, straight off the bat, can I buy your knickers for 50 quid? Was there no one like, hey, how are you getting on? No, he just came in and stared straight at me and asked if he could... I mean, did, do you reckon he left the house that day thinking, I've got a question on my mind and I'm willing to ask <laughs> anyone? Or did he see you and say, now I've got a question on my mind? Well, it's ironically, I don't know about ironically, but whatever, you know, I don't believe in coincidence, Right. But the guy who walked in looked me dead in the eye and asked me if he could buy my knickers for 50 quid. I recognised him because we had been on a date like 10 years before. It wasn't Ryan Giggs, was it? It was not Ryan Giggs, not this time. It, he, uh, but he was a pervert. So it was only the one date and then I literally like ran for my life. And there he was standing in front of me in a sex shop asking to buy my knickers for 50 quid. Wow. Guess what? <laughs> you saw them. Yep. 50 quid. I can buy a lot of knickers for 50 quid. They only cost you know me three right. quid. And that's a bit of a gateway into the whole talk of OnlyFans. <laughs> it's like there's, a, there's two sides of this coin for that one. It's like some people think, I, for myself anyways, when I, see, when I hear about OnlyFans, I think to myself, on one hand, you're putting out the information out there. And then it's like, it's, it's tricky because then the public can see it. People can download it onto the computer. You can't stop anyone. Well, probably there's laws out there now, but they stay at the same time, people are good on computers. You don't know what they're doing. So that's tricky. And then the other side is, you're actually making loads of money. Like, there was some girl, I think, she was one of the first, maybe not the first woman on OnlyFans, but she was some American actress. She didn't even put up any content, and she got one million quid mm. over the course, I think, of a night. One million dollars. Yes. Cash. Just the subscriptions. So, so subscriptions. And I don't know if she continued to do it, but that's enough. Yeah. But I mean, if you can monetize it, but it seems like everything has become monetized. That's the new thing now. It is. And I think, and I resisted getting an OnlyFans channel for ages because I thought, because I worked in a sex shop and I had friends who, including myself, who worked in a peep show and I had friends who like, who, who described themselves. The English TV show on? Pardon? The English TV show on Channel 4. You worked on that? I did not. The peep show. Terrible joke, continue. Terrible joke, continue. I often think of it though, that, that show, I think it was a much cleaner than where I worked. Um, so yes, yeah, so we were, there was a peep show industry when I worked in the, in the sex shop and I had friends who worked in the peep show who also did like chatterbait and things that I used to do, camming, mm -hmm. right? And so and it's kind of ironic that people used to, because, you know, people divide women into like Stratas of society, like the ones you want to introduce your mum to and the ones you don't want your mum to meet. Yeah, we always categorise everybody, though. No, it's we like the, but it's called the Madonna whore dichotomy. And like, and women who are like, fancies themselves to be, well, not fancy themselves, often there's a big snobbery among like the, you know, the Hollywood industry on people who are work for less money in the sex industry, for example, but they're basically doing the same thing. For example, 
Kate Blanchett doesn't do nude scenes, and she was quoted as saying, like, my husband is the only one who sees my bottom. Okay. Well, that implies that anyone else who does do nude scenes is somehow less than Mrs. Pearl Purehart. No, she never said that, though. She was just saying that the only one that gets to see her bum is her husband. Oh, okay. So, so if I show my bum to loads and loads of people for like yeah, they, they five, get... for a five quid subscription, does that make me a lesser person than Kate Blanchett? But who said less? I didn't get that less part. Well, you know, it's, it's, the impl- it's the implication. Like I said, it's like, it's the, oh, you know, you'd want to date Kate Blanchett, but you wouldn't want to take a girl from the sex shop home. No, but I don't think she said that. She was just saying that she, the only person who gets to see her bum is, well, depend, what was the precursor question? Well, it was, uh, it was asking if she'd do nude scenes, you see. Yeah, so she said the nude to see her bum is her. Yeah, I think that's fine. So she's got a no nudity clause, but that. But, but why do you say that she shouldn't have that? No, I'm not saying that. It's just like you think, but there, does it imply that you know? It's like Seth MacFarlane did that. We saw your boobs, um, thing at a at one of the Oscars a few years ago. Do you remember that? No, uh, no. It landed very, very badly. He did like a big musical opening number at the Oscars or the Emmys or something. It must have been the Oscars, and. It was all about women who had done topless shots or who hadn't. So he went through all of them saying, like, we saw your boobs. The chorus was basically, we saw your boobs, we saw your boobs. And he was like, and they were like going, like going to every woman in the audience who had done a topless shot. And then sort of like saying, like, and, but we haven't seen so-and-sos. And I shot to like another actor who like, she sort of like did a little like joyful punch in the air as though she had somehow managed to uh to win oh, okay gotcha by like by by not having her boobies shown and it's like that's what i mean it's like are we um well look at the the swedish film industry everyone's naked and everyone is judged as equal yeah and not long ago i was in uh, i was on the beach and um <clears throat> i think there was a new well there was a nude man on the beach he looked german yep how did you tell from that distance? <laughs> he was circumcised. Okay. No, I'm only joking. Uh, didn't get up, didn't get up <laughs> but if you could tell from a distance, then he probably was. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, that day I didn't have any glasses on me and I was delighted I didn't. Well, you know, they, the fir- their Kranskis are legendary, apparently. The what? Their Kranskis are legendary. Oh, they're, they're schnitzels. Well, hmm. Yes. Um, but um, your man was on the beach and I was looking over at him annoyed. And I was like, who does he think he is walking around the beach with no fucking clothes on? Everyone else has got shorts or something on. Look at him standing there. And he's just standing there looking out at the ocean. and he, Just he, at one with nature, enjoying like, himself. Well, I kind of got the impression he was looking at people to see if they were looking at him. So he could feel some sort of like... Look was this a Kalala? No. There was a definitely a creep hanging around Kalala the last day. No, this guy probably wasn't a creep. And after, and after a while of staring at him... Yeah. I, um... <laughs> so I you mean, were staring at the naked man on the beach. No, no, it well... He, there was a corner of the beach, right? They were just kind of <laughs> protruded out. And there was another, like, lovely little beach where everyone kind of had their clothes on. But he was just the one standing there. And I was like, that's so weird. And then um, I started thinking to myself, well, maybe maybe I'm the prude one. Because, like, look at me here. Like, I'm always like, look. You shouldn't be judging people either. Like, so I suppose the nudity thing is you can take it or leave it. Like, but, well, um, well, it's a German culture thing. Like, I had... Well, it's a human thing. We are born naked. Well, exactly. But I had a, I had a friend who was... German and she'd uh, she, she used uh, she used to she was my massage client in Australia and she told me that when she first emigrated to Perth Western Australia she was walking along the Swan River in a beautiful day and she started to take her clothes off to jump in because that's what you would do in Germany and her husband who had already like come out to get the house set up before they emigrated said no no you're not allowed to do that here and she just looked at him absolutely dumbfounded and says like what do you mean you're not allowed to take your clothes off and go for a swim and it is insane, is it not? Why can't we just take our clothes off? Because religion, that's why. Because, you know. It could be religion or it could be fashion. It could be, it could be Gucci that turned us into these <laughs> kind of people. But Tommy Hilfiger might be like, yeah, you should put on a pair of pants there. What about these pants here? How much are they? Right. 55 quid there. Uh, see, that's an interesting perspective. You see, like, the, you're right. The fashion industry has a, have a vested interest in keeping us oh, yeah. clothes. I mean, definitely. And it all comes down to the insecurity industry which is fear you know and that's making people like it well you're obviously secure in your manhood because you have actually had a nude scene if memory serves oh no no, no, no not at all <laughs> I only did that for the laugh like I only did that to, I only did that to it was more for the shock value oh okay yeah I only did that for the shock value well it wasn't really to shock but it was more so like it was more so to shock my friends on the day 
Because okay. the one of the fellows was like, uh, "Can any of you guys like maybe?" I think he said this. This guy could be wrong. Okay. When any of you guys get nude, they're like, "Yeah, <laughs> we need to bump up the scene a bit. We need to put a bit of energy into it." A bit of oomph into it. Yeah, and I was like, "Sure, I'll, I'll get naked." And they're like, oh, "You will, you fuck, you won't." And I was like, "Oh, I will." Which scene are we talking about? Because you've been naked in a couple of scenes. It was the one at the. Uh, I completely forgot it was, yeah. The Winnebago scene? It was the one at the very end where... Oh, I, the, oh the last lift, scene in the cottage. Up, yeah. And you had a you had a pussycat picture over your manhood, That's like right, Burt yeah. Reynolds and the rooster picture. Jesus Christ, I forgot about that. <laughs> that is fucking so funny. Um, <laughs> no, because I remember the day after that, then I called, my, I called home. I was like, hello, how you doing? Ah, how you hit, man? They don't, they don't know why I put on a Northern Ireland accent. <laughs> <laughs> but they were like... Um, How's filming? No, no, they, no, they said, oh, no, they, they'd seen it. Oh, okay, they'd this, seen it. I'm saying after it was in the cinema. Oh, that, oh my goodness. They'd seen it, and I was like, how was you, uh, did you see the movie? I did, yeah, it was great, fair play to you, you did great. You know, and like, not that my parents already weren't, I didn't, I, not that I already knew, didn't know my parents were legends, because obviously they are. Yeah. But after that, then I was like, oh, these guys are so cool, like, you they know. They were supportive. supportive that's that's you know, great. That's, that's what it is, really, like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, I mean, it, you know, like, I, I'm fairly prude myself, like so. I you're can't not. Talk. You're just a you're just a good boy from the country. That's all. You're not prudish. You're just you know you're brought up with a certain set of standards. You're hardwired to stick to them. Ah, uh, but like sometimes I'd be walking around judging people, you know. Well, that's because I suppose everyone does that, though. Well, it's human nature. I think if you're if, well, you know, again, it's all nature nurture, and like. I know, like, in Australia, because, like, it's hot, <laughs> and we're brought up with, like, to be in our bathers all the time, on the beaches or rivers or swimming. In your bathers? Place. In your bathers, mate. <laughs> mate, in your bathers. Um, you know, which also had its own had its own issues if you didn't look like Elle McPherson, but they're a bit more relaxed nowadays. Um, but... So we were just used to just, like, I remember, like, once talking to a skimpy barmaid and, like, she was paid to just work in her, in the G-string, basically, and she said, I come from Northern Territory. I'm, like, I'm wearing more clothes than I normally would out in my parents' like station in the Northern Territory. It's just, you know, it's just culture, like, you yeah. know, if you're used to it, of, like, you know, I, I was brought up in a household that is so prudish by modesty standards that I used to that I used to be aghast because if my dad some like my dad would like say from the bathroom, um, could you hand me a towel? And my mother would hand him a towel like around the corner of the door with her head averted, looking into the passageway. I'm thinking, how was I born? Yeah. You know what I mean? It was I like, and, and she said, and I'm like, what? what is it like? You're meant to be married. And she's going, oh, still, he wants his privacy. You've got to have a bit of modesty. You don't go, I'm like, what is the deal? So I probably went the other way. I'm like, you know, forever, forever tearing my clothes off. Yeah. But I suppose it all comes back to OnlyFans. And if, you know, if you can make money off it, monetize it, you know, but there's always, there's a yin and yang to everything. There's always one, like, you won't, you can't just go on the internet, do stuff. <clears throat> get the money for it and then it's gone well exactly that's not how it works that's not how it works plus also the the double edged sort of OnlyFans is like because I have an OnlyFans account obviously but and I appreciate all the support and the subscribers but then you start getting messages when they start telling you what to do and what they want to see you do and it might be stuff I'm not comfortable with and I don't want to do that and I won't be doing that do you know what I mean because yeah. I'm not a sub. I'm not a submissive, and no one's going to no, tell, tell tell me to do anything I am not comfortable with just for their five bucks a month, you know, exactly. <laughs> or right. even and that's and they say or for or would I do it for a million bucks? And then we're just arguing semantics, aren't we? Well, that's the thing you see. They say everyone's got a price. Well, you see, there's like the old joke about the millionaire in his eighties who like pulls up to the curb in his limousine and he winds down the window. And he says to a beautiful young blonde on the corner, it's like, young lady, I'm a billionaire. I own all the oil rights in this town. Will you sleep with me for a million dollars? And she says, sure. And he says, how about a buck? And she says, a lousy dollar? I don't think so. What do you think I am? He says, we've already established what you are. And now we're just haggling. All right. Jesus. <laughs> and that's basically what it comes down to, doesn't it? 
But you see, I have no problem. Like, it's um, if you have autonomy over your own body, then really it's your right to choose what you do with it, how you display it, where you wear what, and to what audience, isn't it? Within oh, yeah. within bounds of like the conditions of wherever your you know your Definitely. platform. Obviously, no, it is, what, yeah. one nipple slip in my YouTube channel is yeah, gone. I know, but that's the end of that. Unfortunately, I think I think we kind of give away. Not that we should, not that we give away the rights, but like number one, the phones now they have two cameras on them, maybe three. Mm. If you look at the back of some of the phones, they have actually three cameras because they're trying to get the picture right. Well, that's what they say. Yeah. Even though I'm going full conspiracy now, but like, well, most you know, you got, got, if you listen to Edward Snowden, it's not a freaking conspiracy, is it? Some conspiracies got, are real. Yeah, we got the webcams as well and all that stuff there, and like, I. They probably are like listen. Probably are watching. Like Lexa is on standby when she's in the house, but at the same time, she she is listening. Like because like you'll see the kind of movement at the bottom of the page. Where oh, it's, like, absolutely. So definitely, like they're picking up on shit all the time, and uh, I think the way things are going now with the internet, it, all the information is going to be up there. And like, there's enough stuff up there about any of us really that they can use in many many different ways. So like, well, exactly. Like, I gave my DNA to Ancestry dot com. Okay. Okay. And the Fenian was like freaking out about that over the, at the time. And I'm like, well, I they've already got my DNA in a government database because I've been in hospital and had surgical procedures and chromosomes analysed and that sort of thing. So I'm already in someone's database. Yeah. So you can only limit <laughs> how much you can control things, you know. Well, that's it. That's but now that but now they uh, they're catching people through like. Sites like that, Ancestry and, you know, 123 Heritage, whatever they think yeah. they are, because they're like, oh, he's got the same DNA. Do you reckon the real world will ever become the secondary world? Isn't it all? I'm starting to think we're all like like Superman's... This, what is it? Is it the villains in Superman that are just like floating that prism through space endlessly? I'm starting to think we're stuck in one of those. Could be, yeah. Hard to know. The Fenian came up with a brilliant title for it. It was like... The prison of the travelling now, and I thought, and then he looked at oh, me and he said, "It says that's a." They said, "There's a title for you. Go write the book." Right, the prison of the travelling now. That is such a good line. The prisoner of the travelling now. Well, the prison of the travelling now. We're all just stuck in, like you oh know, if God. we're in this simulation, like inside, like that a flat is... prison, just hurling through space. That's like, like a hologram. But I mean, that but you see, when I started to suspect that I was someone's bloody Tamagotchi, <laughs> and that we're like we're living in some sort of computer game well, that's a different level again like you're, yeah. you're saying that we're in a simulation well um, well I started yeah. to wonder and then I noticed that everyone else was thinking it too and then I st- I heard of Plato's cave and like it's I'm not the first person to think so by any stretch of the imagination oh, it's about the shadows when you light a, when you light a fire in a cave you can see only the and you see only the shadows that's your perception of life but then one of the people in the cave went for a walk or something and they saw that the fire actually was creating the shadows is that what that is Huh. Not exactly. But yes. What was the thing you were talking about? Plato's cave. Well, about... Well, just... Well, yes, it is basically like our simulation... Like, are we just living in one little sort of like pod and the rest of the world is going on around us and in the... And, you know, was I don't know, what is Terry Pratchett's Discworld or something about, you know, uh, a disc being carried around on the backs of four... Kurt- turtles and like it's as, as likely an explanation as anything mm-hmm. else do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. it's just or the the bell on the cat's collar in men in black mm. I'm just beginning to have serious doubts about the whole bloody thing quite frankly and like I've often said it doesn't help that like there's a tv star sitting in my you know front room recording a podcast because I often think like perhaps I'm in an asylum hallucinating a tv star and we're having, I'm having a conversation we're with a pot plant <laughs> Please, Marty, do you want to talk? Marty Whelan's here. <laughs> Marty, how you doing? Not too bad now. <laughs> Not too bad now. Thanks for talking to me, guys. It's a pleasure to have you here, Marty. What, what have you got to say on the current situation? I just, just doing a bit of winning streak this week now. A bit of winning streak now. A couple of scratch cards. You're not referring to the demise of our queen, eh? Oh, no, I yes. sure never heard anything about her. What happened to her? Well, I'm afraid, as the crowds in Teller chanted the other night, Lizzie's in a box. All oh, right. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, he's gone now again, Marty, so. Uh, well, thanks for popping in, Marty. Yeah, he, he doesn't really say goodbye. He does the Irish goodbye. That's where it came from. That's where it comes from. Oh, well, I have to say this about Marty. He looks as good walking away as he did coming. I just wish he'd put on a pair of pants. <laughs>
Well, fortunately, we're not streaming live on camera. We can all hear too much that shit. <laughs> the carpet matched the rug. Oh, Jesus. Well, I didn't realise he had uh, a ginger moustache. <laughs> well, you know you're Irish when, because they've all got a touch of ginger in their minge and their beard. Even if they've got, like, black hair, as soon as the beard goes out, you can see in the in the sunshine, they've got a bit of ginger there. We're like Vikings met so Armada. Speaking of Vikings, right? Mm-hmm. In a way, how come no one is upset about the Vikings? Because it's so long ago. Okay. Yes, it's not. Like, it's like being upset about like Julius Caesar. There's like. Oh fuck! Don't you bring his name up in this house. <laughs> the things he did to my great 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 grandfathers, I will not <laughs> forgive him. I didn't realise you had a bit of Italian Stalin in you, Cole. Just the toes, really. <laughs> Someone told me one time I've got Italian toes. Because I've got a good touch on the football field. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fair enough, yeah. Italian toes. Yeah, I used to be, um, they used to call me Ravinelli in school. Ravinelli? Yeah. Because that's a great footballer. The, the Silver Fox used to play for Middlesbrough. And he had this very special celebration where he'd pull the top over his head. And I score goals like him. Actually, you're not into football, are you? Well, I know of it. No, there was a weird moment in Middlesbrough's life where um, they signed like some really, really, really good players. Mm -hmm. And he was one of them. And there's like another guy from, I think he was from Brazil, Emerson or something. But I remember he just said in the paper, Emerson gone AWOL. (laughs) And I was like, what the fuck does AWOL mean? And he just meant like he's gone. He's He's like, he's not picking up the phone. Yeah. Nice away word, without, okay, well. yeah, away without leave. Oh, is that what it means? Yeah, it's a military term. Ah. away without leave. I think I probably read that in teletext back in ninety eight. But <laughs> a wall, like it's one of those military, like snafu situation, normal, all fucked up. Say again, situation. Normal, all fucked up, snafu. When people say how are things going, they say snafu. It's like a code on the radio. Snafu mm-hmm. means situation normal, all fucked up. It's the question, is it? Well, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Or, or a response, you know, how are things going? Situation normal, all fucked up. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can also yeah. say, ah, oh, everything's 10 16 here, 10 16. Yes. And that means that, like, there's someone around that you can't, so you can't talk. That's CB language. Yeah. If you ever decide to get a CB and you want to communicate with some truck drivers and you're talking to them about something that you don't really want anyone to know about, mm-hmm. someone walks into the room, for example, just go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a 10 16, and it isn't that. Oh, 1016. Yeah. All right. I'll remember that. Or if you say 10, 10, 20. Yeah, what's the 10, 10, 20? That's like they'll bring you into the local hardware store and buy you a bag of fertilizer. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. But uh, the first bit's true. The first bit is true. I'm, I've actually lamented the fact that I don't have a CV radio purely because my, I've got such a good call name. I'm Mama Duck. I'm lit, like, how many times have you heard like truckers going like, that's a big 10-4, Mama Duck. And I'm, like, I'm actually a fucking Mama Duck and I yeah. don't have a CB radio. It's a crime. I think I've actually heard that. <laughs> I've heard <laughs> that name now that I think about it. Yeah, yeah. I, Either that or it's... Um, I think it's in Convoy. Is it in Convoy? It's like jet pilots. I've heard people saying jet pilots going, Mama Duck, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, but you know, is there, there's a song called Convoy. It was like, oh, um, we were driving in Convoy and it's like a very country we western. Missing? We were driving in the convoy down the road. Yee-hoo. Not quite the one, but yes, we're driving driving a convoy, and it's all like lots of CB talking, trucking. I'm pretty sure like there's a mum and dad mentioned in there. I thought, definitely. yeah, yeah. I th- maybe I should get a CB put in the old hippie travelling van. That'd oh, be, definitely should. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. But anyways, well, actually, you could do some you could do some videos about that. Yeah, we were saying earlier about the the browser history and all that stuff. That's interesting too. You know the way like you wouldn't really give anyone a chance to. Like the phones are very, people like to be, we're all like kind of so caught up in our own phones. We are. And and like, you know. Everyone is though. Like it's not just we all young are. people, it's old people as well. It, it is. You look at a restaurant now and just like people are. Yeah. We used to, and we were complaining about this 10 years ago, but now it's just the same. I mean, and like I do tours now and you see people on their phones, like in the middle of tours, like getting messages from back home. And they're like, they're missing things like St. Paul's Cathedral. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, and it's insane. You have your heads over a phone where you're paying but for a guy. The strange and annoying part is that, like, if you sit there, we'll say, in a cafe, and mm-hmm. you're not on your phone, you're sitting there looking. Yep. People will be like, what's this guy looking at? Yeah, what, what's he doing? And I remember 
when we we moved to Tasmania in 2013, part of the reason we moved there is because it was like really shit mobile range. Like I did it deliberately because yeah. I was trying to like take my kids back to like, you know, family values give, and like get them away from the noise and the constant online. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a mobile for ages. And... Um, and but I was on the radio, so I'd drive. I'd drive to the radio station, and I wouldn't have like a mobile between here and there. But then we went to like, I went to like the Christmas party of like the radio station, all the staff, and I didn't know them very well. Yeah. So and the Fenian couldn't go with me because he had to stay behind and look after the bub. So I went by myself. So I was in a room full of strangers, and I didn't have a phone. And it was the first time in years. And it was like, I thought normally I would be over my phone, like sending witty texts to like friends who aren't in the room going like, oh God, I'm in the corner and I've only on my first pound or something. You know how you do like, Mm -hmm. so to deliberately avoid engaging with the people that you're in the room with. It's Mm -hmm. just like if if you're socially anxious or you're thinking, I don't know what to talk to these people about or just, you know, whatever. Um, you just like in, instead of engaging with them, instead of, sometimes instead of being brave and going up and saying like, "Don't think I got your first name." Instead, you just you look at your phone. And you're like, "Oh God, I'm stuck here. It's a shit night. Where are you?" Instead, you know, you don't you lose the mo- you you lose the present moment. Yeah, because you're not even in the same room. It's like lads WhatsApp groups, right? Like I've seen <laughs> the fiend, like the Fenian, bless his soul. You can't give away that. No, 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 it. I'm not, I'm not giving it away. I'm not giving it away. There's nothing, there's nothing about Feeney. It's just like, he's in a WhatsApp group. It's just a lad's chat. There's nothing rude or anything, but they ping each other all the time over the football. And it's going off all the time. And I'm thinking like, and it's on as obviously it's on weekends. I'm thinking so like you, you're even bringing your work home with you. Like there's no, in the, 20 years ago, it was like, you'd like see a Monday gym. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's just constantly... And people like it's a different kind of friendship. It's, now. it's a different kind of friendship now. It's just like you just const- like you're you're constantly in each other's face twenty four seven. It's just like it's like you get one at like eleven, 11 just saying like, yeah, I was going to sleep, but no, like, but I just got up for a wee, and so I thought I'd say hello. He's still up. It's just for a chat. You think you wouldn't normally do that? Yeah, it's true. But now we do. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because sometimes it might be like, well, thank God you text. I was lying here awake too. So it's nice to have yeah. that connectivity, but it just means the entire, the entire thing has changed. Sometimes I, I get nostalgia. Sometimes I was watching an old film the other day, and they just like people were just talking on landlines with like stretchy yeah. cords. And I thought I kind of miss sitting in one spot, having <laughs> just talking with someone in my ear about all sorts. I know what you're saying. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just to, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I suppose with the phone, you feel a bit less lonely. You do, because thankfully. Then, you know, you know this. Like you can, you can kind of take up the phone any time of the night, yep. any time of the day. You can go on it. You can chat to somebody. Yep, you can. Like hopefully, and even not even. But then if, again, we also need time to be on our own as well. Oh, we, we do. Like anymore. it's important to like you know give your phone a break. I was thinking, I might. I have to. It's hard though. It is, and, I, and I'm on a. I need to put on my screen time. I'm actually scared to put on my screen time because I'm worried that oh. it'll say something where I'm like, oh no, I've wasted so much in my life. Well, I used to, uh, my high screen time is, I can't even imagine. Because I'm also being like an Aussie, but in Ireland, so having connections in the sun of the hemisphere. What would and you say, it, could, you, could you give me an estimate of what it, might, what it would have been last Tuesday? I would spend most of my waking hours, like, checking for messages or whatever. Because, like, I have, like, family that are 12 hours time difference. Mm. Do you mean so I might... Or nine hours or something in in the west coast of Australia, so they might be like thinking, well, she's like about to go to bed. I can get a message in then. So I'm just always, um, or it's like because I have kids in other time zones. I'm just always on my phone, and yeah. but as well as the stuff you have to do here. Like I'm going to go on another tour with my like day job, and it's all done by app. So I have like a phone and a tablet, and it's all like the phone tells me where to like I plot my. Mm, my uh, my route through like you know maps apps and then I like the tour has an actual app telling me who's on it and what flight they're coming in and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. It's just it's literally all based in the phone. And like in one way, it's like this is spa- this is but it's like it's like Star Trek is like I learned to type on a, like a typewriter that wasn't plugged into anything. You know what I mean? Like is how old I am? Fifty, and it's like. It's like I've seen like this industrial revolution in the last 
30 years has just taken me away. I still feel, I said it's like, you know, in, I used to watch Star Trek as a kid and that would be like the big screen on the wall with someone like live and you think one day and you think I wouldn't happen to my, like, my grandchildren. Yeah. And now it's like we've been just doing it, we just, we think, we think it's nothing of it. Just pick up the phone and call someone face to face. And I love it. I love it. I'm oh, saying, I thank God for it. It's great, but it's like it's like anything really, as long as you can keep it in its place. I think it does have the it does, does have a bit have, of sneakiness it, to it. it. Yes. Do you know, it's, like I've become been dependent. Yeah. And it's like you know. This morning when I woke up, I was like, right, don't go on the phone straight away. Just let yourself fucking think for a minute. Exactly. And just chill. Just try to do it for ten minutes. So I was got up and I, sorry, I was just lying there, anyways. I was trying to fucking wake up. And I was like, oh, I'm just gonna have fall asleep here now again. I was like, if I go on the phone, I'll just be inundated with stuff that'll just like clog up my thoughts. Yeah. You get a notification, then just fall down the hole of whatever. But even then, I tried to like read a little magazine I had beside the bed. It wasn't a hardcore magazine, by the way. <laughs> but um, <it laughs> didn't think you would. <laughs> it was a Gardener's Weekly, no. <laughs> but even then, after that, then I was like, I'll just check the phone. So it was just, it was like I still felt like I had to check the phone. Yes. And if you, sometimes you know, I put the phone down, I thought, I'm going out without it. And you just feel like oh, that panicky thing, like, I've lost it somewhere. Where is it? You know, it was like, there's yeah. something missing. Like, where is it? But I've been trying to, uh, I put it on Do Not Disturb a lot lately. So that I'm not constantly checking, the, like, what the notification sounds are. Because yeah. sometimes it's like, because you also get that little, like, I don't know. That little heart start sometimes, thinking like it might be something important from someone that you actually care about or something. Exactly. And it's just, and and you know, and it's just like an email from something you subscribed to three years ago. Yeah. You know, and you've forgotten about. But Emails that you get from years ago, you're like, what the fuck's going on here? Exactly. And you think, you know. But yes, I was thinking of like once I'm back from the tour, it should be my last tour for the year. I'm going to just like make myself not pick up the phone for a full hour after I get when I wake up I'm just going to walk away from the phone yeah. and like and I'm not going to pick up for an hour and I'll start from there you should definitely do that yeah no. when are you when are you streaming next I will probably stream this afternoon okay there you go. Oh, so you won't get this podcast up in time oh you will oh no I will actually that's a good point mm. I will get this podcast up tonight and then I will I'll be up on YouTube soon as well Will you? And what is the name of your YouTube channel? Well, you think you're better than me because you've got more followers now, don't you? <laughs> My YouTube name is Owen Colgan, but I haven't so much up there, but I'm going to get there. You're going to get there? Of I'm course you there. are. I'm going to do this like, nice casual chat. So, <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see your stream, Owen Colgan. All right, thanks for stopping by. Chat to you soon. See you when you've got nothing on.